All right, well, hello everyone. And this is a video which is going to explain peer instruction, um, which I feel is an approach to promote scientific literacy and to uh, assess students on conceptual knowledge. Um, so first off, I mean, what is, what is peer instruction? Well, the main premise of peer instruction is that it is student-centered. Um, and what I mean by that is students are actually given the opportunity to learn from one another. So they're actually learning from their peers. So with that being said, um, how do students actually learn from their peers? Well, the basic structure of peer instruction that I use um, is a result of my flipped classroom approach. So um, outside of class, I'll have students watch introduction um, video lectures on, on basic concepts. Uh, and then when we come into class, um, I use these things called plickers. So the first step of peer instruction that I use are these things called plickers. And what plickers are, um, they're just cards um, that have uh, four letters on them, A, B, C, and D. And I pose multiple choice conceptual questions to students. And they pick an individual response so they don't communicate with one another initially. Um, and I take a look at the results in real time because I can see the results pop up on uh, my iPad. So I'll take a look at the results of a particular Plicker question. If I get results that are less than 80%, less than 80% per question, I then open it up. And this is really where the peer instruction part comes in. So at this point, then I'll open it up for the students and I'll put a timer on, typically for three to five minutes. And I will ask them to discuss the question at hand um, discuss the question at hand with the person they're sitting with or people that they're sitting around. I might open it up to groups of three or four. My purpose in doing this is that uh, chances are one of the people in that group has the right answer. And um, through this dialogue that I'm creating, uh, I'm, I'm having students challenge their own preconceptions uh, to the um, conceptual problem and also um, getting students who are really comfortable with the stuff, getting them to actually teach someone else about it. Because to me, um, the greatest form of demonstrating mastery is being able to teach something. So after this peer instruction period, I then pose the plicker question again. So we do plickers again. And again, if, if again the, the results are less than 80%, then I step in to clear up any misconceptions or any difficulties um, that students might be having. So this part, this last portion, is solely on me as the teacher. However, uh, everything prior to that is very student-centered, learning from one another. Now, why do I use peer instruction? Why, why is peer instruction something that I've implemented in my own classroom? Well, uh, in a, physics, in a physics classroom, what I've found is students are typically very strong mathematically. They can, they can manipulate equations. They know how to plug things into equations to get an answer. However, actually setting up a problem and thinking about a problem, uh, that is the physics, and that's what students really struggle with. So I use peer instruction to uh, develop conceptual understanding. Okay, I use uh, peer instruction to develop conceptual understanding. And then with that, um, along with that, I'm also building students' scientific literacy and, and their discourse in terms of physics. I want students to be able to talk about physics. I want students to be able to understand that, that physics occurs around them all the time and that we can analyze any sort of situation based on the concepts that we're learning. Another reason that I use peer instruction is it provides me a way to um, formatively assess students. So again, with Plickers, I can actually go back and I can take a look at the results prior to the peer instruction period and the results after the peer instruction uh, period. So what that does for me as a teacher is it shows me like, okay, hey, we can move on from this because students have an understanding. Um, 
but also it can guide me into things that I may need to reteach or that I may need to uh, more fully explain to them through another video lecture or through an in-class demo or maybe just through a mini lecture. Now again, that kind of goes along with the next point here, how to actually assess peer instruction. Again, the plickers are the main way that I do this. However, I also, um, half of the tests that I give or the summative assessments directly relate to uh, concepts. So I call them concept tests. So um, typically I'll give a test in a two-day period. The first is solely a concept test. So this can take the form of um, conceptual multiple choice questions similar to what I give them in the plickers. Um, I also could give them a scenario that they have to explain conceptually. For example, um, on, a, on a test that I just recently gave my, phys my physics students, um, it was, uh, you know, you, you take a, a sharp right turn in your car. Why does your hot coffee that's in the um, cup holder, why does it spill in your lap? So that's something that they would have to verbally explain to me uh, conceptually as to why that happened. And then through this, you know, I can, again, see whether that's something that we need to go back and reteach. And I'm totally fine with going back to reteaching that stuff even after a test. But it's also something that um, I can pose to the class and get them talking again, going back to peer instruction. So peer instruction... Again, this is the form that I typically use, but it's a very dynamic thing in that it can be used all the time. Uh, anytime that we can get the, get the students to talk about something and teach one another, uh, to me, that constitutes peer instruction. So uh, thank you for listening, and I hope that peer instruction is something that, that we can all use uh, in our classrooms because, uh, to me, getting students to talk and really learning from one another and, and building discourse in whatever content area uh, is a huge plus. So take care.